One fear of what would happen next to them. Sometimes if your belief system is one that's a very strict religious belief system that says you're going to go to hell if you've done bad things, some people don't want to go on. They're really worried they're going to go on to hell. Or it could be a very tragic um, accident where the person just really doesn't understand that they have died in the physical and they're very confused because they, they don't realize that they're going on and they miss the light because of the accident. Or it could be a case of someone that does not want to go on because they haven't finished what they felt they needed to finish on this plane. So Michael Evans was speaking that <coughs> night about this. Um, I hadn't really thought much in my background about the personality continuing. I quite, I was brought up Episcopal, which is sort of like Church of, well, it is Church of England. And I always think of the spirit going on to God, or never too much into hell myself, but then I'm a big scaredy cat, so I kind of like to think everybody goes to heaven. But but the main thing is, I would think of spirit going up, but not necessarily personality. So he was speaking, and, and, and I was really interested in this, and this sounded, yeah, this is good, this is good, because then these earthbound spirits could become attached to people, and that's how this lady would come and say that her dead mother-in-law had possessed her. But then he told me that he was part of a group called, um, yes, the Spirit Release Foundation, who was headed, it was headed up, by Alan Sanderson, Dr. Alan Sanderson. Some of you here have heard Dr. Alan Sanderson speak. (coughs) And the Spirit Release Foundation is a foundation that has many um, psychiatrists, psychologists, medical doctors, counselors, healers involved in it. (coughs) And they're using Spirit Release Therapy on people for this condition that if you have an attached spirit they help to release it I did bring a book here which is here if anybody wants to take a peek at it Uh, William J. Baldwin who now has passed this was his book and it's sort of the manual the manual on spirit releasement therapy I've also brought some brochures back there if anyone's interested in the Spirit Release Foundation um, you may take a brochure, it's on the internet look it up if you're interested at all so we were listening to this and all of a sudden Michael said and you'd really like, he looked at me and he said and you'd really like Alan because Alan has worked a lot with multiple personalities And as a psychiatrist, he found that not everyone with the multiple personality syndrome fits into that category. And over the last few years, he's been using spirit release therapy on them to release the attached spirits which were causing the multiple personality in in subjects. Now this really, I mean, this was something that excited me because I thought, now, I could really get into that, because I I have the psychology in my background, and I had always thought that people with multiple personalities quite possibly had a split spirit or another spirit in them. So I got in touch with them, but that's another story. But the reason why I felt that was when I went home, after this meeting it all came back to me that in 1982 when I was studying with Bill Burns who is a very well known psychic in the United States and comes over here, he comes to London quite a bit to do some work and I was doing some psychic work with him and one day we were doing mediumship 
and we were in partners around the room and I was working with the person over in the corner and what we were supposed to do in partners was one would watch and the other would open their crown chakra and allow a spirit to come in so that you could be a medium so that the spirit could use your body your vocal cords, that sort of thing, with permission and with the understanding that they would leave after the work was done. It was a contract sort of thing. They could only come in if they promised to leave, that sort of thing. And when it was my turn to do it with my partner, we were having some problems. And I was um, in an altered state of consciousness at the time. So the person working with me called Bill over. And what transpired was that I couldn't have anybody come in because I already had two people in there. And one of them was trying to get out and the other one wouldn't let him go. So that was very interesting because we had it all down on tape. Uh, Bill came over and what he figured out or what... It took about a half an hour and we all... um, He worked with me and the other people were watching and taping. And at that time, they decided that one at birth, I had had two spirits come in, or two souls, however you want to look at that, souls or spirits, come in to my body. And that, for all those years, I had these two spirits working in my body, very similarly personality-wise, Either that or my friends and family were so oblivious to what was going on in my life they didn't notice that half the time I was one person and half the time I was another person, which, which is quite close. That could have happened too. But the main thing is that they, he talked me through spirit releasement therapy in 1982 and I hadn't even, it, it hadn't even dawned on me that that's what I had gone through. Because when it was all over... And we discussed it. I came out of um, my altered state of consciousness. And we discussed what had happened and listened to the tape. We had decided, yes, this is must what have happened. Was that I had the two spirits, two souls, however you want to call it. And that one was released, went back up into the light. And the other one stayed with me. Which is me. Now. The other important thing in that time, which um, maybe I didn't really want to remember it that much, was uh, for about 12 or 15 years up to that time, I'd been very, very depressed and suicidal at times. And that has never been true since because it was that other spirit that had left. So this all came rushing back to me after having this meeting with Michael Evans and I thought, oh, I've got to do this. I have got to get involved in this because I'm getting all of these wonderful, um, this wonderful information from the universe, from my higher self, from the source, from God, from my friends and support group around me. All of these signs are coming to me that this is something I really have to look into. So I did. Got in touch with um, Dr. Alan Sanderson. We had a long talk. Um, I went right out and got the book. Studied it. Used it in my work. Um, I have some terrific friends that we worked together to be able to start developing this technique that is a little bit different. I call it therapeutic energy release only because of my belief system that says I don't want to rule anything out. Spirit releasement therapy sometimes can put people off if their belief system doesn't happen to be spirit orientated because it doesn't 
have to be a spirit that we're releasing. Usually, a person can form an attachment, some kind of an attachment, when there has been some trauma in their life. So the trauma can be illness, accident, mental abuse, physical abuse, um, birth. For those of you who believe in reincarnation, it can be past life. It can be present life. Any type of trauma at all. And as you know, one person's trauma could be just not getting the red lollipop instead of the green lollipop. And another person's trauma has to be a car accident or a death in the family. But the main thing is that we are all susceptible to attachments of some time of energy. And so we were looking at different types of energy that could attach. So we've already talked about earthbound spirits. Also, two different souls or two different spirits at birth. Or could even be before birth if we're talking about reincarnation. Mind fragments from people who are living. Um, an example would be a young sensitive child coming out of a family with a domineering mother or father. And that dominant ego pressing against the sensitive ego for years and years can actually break off from the living person that's trying to do the domination and attach to the more sensitive one. And they can take that through life. So we were looking at a way to release mind fragments, thought fragments, all of these different ways, which most of them are taken care of in this book. So I do recommend it highly for anyone that's interested in this area at all to really read through this one. Demo demonic possession. If you were in the Roman Catholic Church or some of the other churches still do it also. Exorcism. You could consider this a type of exorcism. The difference with exorcism and releasement therapy basically is with exorcism they really don't care the why and the how of it they just want to get rid of whatever it is that's attached with releasement therapy you're looking to see with the person that you're working with how did this come about what trauma brought this attachment? What kind of an attachment is it? We really would like to know. And that has to do with the person's belief system that you're working with. And that's where the trust comes in. The therapist must believe in the reality of the client, of the patient that you're working with. When you work with them, the trust has to be there because when they sit down there with you and you're working together they will tell you things that is their reality at the time and you believe what they tell you and that's how you work it through Sopra un mare bellissimo